In this video, we're going to learn about sheet metal inside of Fusion 360. To start, we need to switch into the sheet metal workspace. You'll notice that there are a few new icons in the Create menu, New Component, and Flange. Under the Modify menu, you can see Unfold, Create Flat Pattern, and Sheet Metal Rules. Let's start out by creating a sheet metal component. Notice that you can give your sheet metal component a name. In this case, we'll call it Outlet Box. In this menu, you can see that there are sheet metal rules. We will cover sheet metal rules in the next video. In this example, we are just going to use the default steel inch rule. A new icon appears in the browser that looks like a sheet metal part. Now we can start drawing the profile. Let's create a center rectangle that's 2 by 3 inches. With our profile created, we can now use the flange command. The flange command is actually four commands in one, similar to the press pull command in Fusion. When we click on the profile, the flange command turns it into a sheet metal part using the sheet metal rule we specified, and it gives us a preview. You can specify which direction you want the sheet metal to extrude, either towards you, away from you, or symmetrically. So, the first flange command added thickness to our profile. The next flange command allows you to create a bend. Notice how it automatically creates the bend according to the bend rules. In this case, we want to extrude up two and a half inches. You can also select multiple edges at the same time. In the menu, you can see that there are a few options. First, you can specify the height of the bend, in this case, two and a half inches. Second, you can specify the angle of the bend, for example, 45 degrees. Next, we have height datums and bend positions. Let's turn on the sample block to allow you to see these options more clearly. This block is two inches wide and two and a half inches tall. If the height datum is set to inner faces, you can see that the height is measured from the inside face to the top of the part. That is why it is sticking up the thickness of the sheet metal above the sample block. If we say outer faces, it is measuring from the outside or the bottom of the sheet metal part to the top two and a half inches. Under bend position, selecting inside, you'll notice that the bends cause the sheet metal part to be inside our two inch width. Selecting outside causes the bends to make the sheet metal be on the outside of our two inch width. Selecting adjacent causes the bends to start adjacent to the 2 inch width. And finally, tangent causes the bend to be tangent to the 2 inch width. Typically, you'll be using inside or outside bend positions most of the time. You can also flip directions of the bend if necessary. You don't have to select the opposite edges. The third type of flange is called the contour flange. This allows you to draw an open profile and the flange command will turn it into a sheet metal part. In this example, we will just draw a quick angled profile along our existing sheet metal part. Using the flange command, 
we can pick on the open profile and start to drag. Notice how the corners of the sheet metal part are bent accordingly even though we created a sharp edged sketch. It created this as a new body, so we can move this down if we want. The last flange command is the join flange. This allows you to join sheet metal parts together, even if they're not touching. In this example, we will draw a profile from this edge. When we do the flange command, we can select the profile and then the sheet metal part. Notice how they are joined together. Even if your profile is not touching the sheet metal part, it will still extend and join. In this example, you can see that the profile is not touching the sheet metal part. However, it extends the profile and joins the parts together. This is a great way to create features such as hems. We're going to just add two more flanges on these other edges. Notice how we can click on an existing flange to grab its height. Let's offset a few faces really quick because we want to give a little clearance when we bend these edges over. We'll use the flange command again to create a flange on this edge. The preview shows you if you need to change any settings, such as the bend position. We don't want this flange to go the whole distance along the edge, so we can choose different edge options in the flange dialog box. Full edge goes the full distance of the edge. Symmetric allows you to specify a distance for the length of the flange symmetrically. Note that the distance is half of the flange length. Two sides gives you the option to specify the length of the flange using two distances, such as 0.25 up and 0.75 down. Finally, we have two offsets, which allows you to specify a distance from a reference point or plane. Instead of saying the length of the flange, you are telling Fusion how far from a location you want that flange to be. In this example, let's use symmetric and use 0.4 for the distance. Let's do the same on the other side. You also have the option to create an automatic miter flange. Let's switch to another model to see this. With the miter option checked, notice when we drag the arrow, the corners are automatically mitered for us. Jumping back, let's add flanges to the other side of the part. You can override some of the rules when creating a flange. Here, we can tell sheet metal to do a tear instead of a straight bend relief, for example. You can also override the bend radius if necessary. Let's add some symmetric flanges on the top for some screw mounts. We'll make the distance 0.2. 
you can use regular modeling commands such as fillet, chamfer, and offset. Let's fillet these edges and chamfer the folded tabs. Adding a couple of holes that reference the curved edge will finalize our outlet box. Now that our outlet box is mostly complete, we want to unfold it to see what it would look like flat. In the unfold command, it is asking for a stationary entity. This is the face that will stay put and the other bends will unfold against it. You can choose to unfold individual bends or you can select all bends. You can even make changes to the sheet metal part in its unfolded state. Let's draw a slot that crosses over multiple bends. We can then cut the slot profile through the part. Now, when we refold the part, we can see how the slot folds with it. 